As photographers, there's really not much more rewarding than finally seeing your work in print, getting it off the screen into a physical, tangible work of art. Of course, though, there's a few steps that need to be taken to get it off your camera, onto the computer, and then through the printing lab to here in your hands, or even better, on the wall of someone who's supporting you. And that really is one of the highest honors. So in this video, I wanna share with you the steps that I take to adjust my files so that when I get them back from the printing lab, they look exactly like what I see on the computer at home. All right, let's have a look. Okay, step one is opening up the image that you wanna print. This is an image that's been converted from a raw file to a PSD, a Photoshop document. So that's a high res uncompressed image. Typically I'll be saving my RAWs either to the PSD or if you're a Lightroom user, you may wanna use a TIFF file. Um, either is fine, they're just high res uncompressed and it's a separate file now from the RAW. That's just how I save all my imagery once it's been edited. So the next thing I'll do, I've opened up that PSD file is I wanna resize this now to be whatever I'm printing at. So you could be printing at 10 inches, you could be printing at 100 inches. So this one, we're gonna be printing at 45 inches on the longest edge. It's gonna be a 30 by 45. So the procedure now is going up the top in Photoshop here to image and then down to image size. And we're getting now the existing size of the file. And I like to work in inches when I'm printing, it's quite common. So if it's not on inches, you can just convert it right there. And like I said, I wanna do 45 inches long. So typically you only really think about the longest edge. So I'm gonna do 45 inches there. And whoop, I've done that on the width, which was a mistake. The longest edge on this one is the height. So I'm gonna go 45. And now it's kept that two to three ratio. That's what I shoot at, a two to three ratio. That's the, the sensor size on a full frame, a two to three. So it's, it's basically converted the width now to 30. So it's a 30 by 45. So change the longest edge. The resolution I leave at 300. That's the pixels per inch, the PPI. The only time I would ever change that is when things are going on the web, they would actually decrease the PPI. But in this case, I leave it at 300. And that's all I change. So if you're gonna simplify it, change the longest edge to whatever your print size is. In this case, 45 inches. We're gonna push OK. And in this scenario, we're upscaling. So you can see now that the file has become much larger. I'm gonna now hold down Command and push zero just to go back to the full screen. Now for the critical part of printing, I wanna show you what I do, which is short and simple and it works. I'm going to duplicate this layer first and foremost. So I'm just working on a fresh layer to duplicate. I'm holding Command and pushing J. We've got a second layer there now, which is just a duplicate of the first one. All we need to do really is make sure that this file, which is going off to the printer, is not as dark as it currently is, because if we print this out now, it's going to look way too dark and underexposed for the paper, for the canvas, etc. because we're viewing this on a backlit screen. There's a lot of fine details here, especially in these mids and shadows. Say these uh, little portions of the trees, for example, they're just going to get completely lost once we're printed. It's just too dark. It's fine for a screen, and I always process for the screen because that's where the images are gonna be viewed predominantly. But now when it's time to print, we need to brighten things up. So on this fresh layer, that's where I'm gonna do the work. And what I personally do is go back to Camera Raw. You can go back to Lightroom if you're a Lightroom user. I'm gonna go Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and the image is gonna pop up in here in ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. Now, all I need to do predominantly is think of these dark tones. So we've got all these dark shadows and those darker mid-tones. That's the main part that we want to get brighter. A great reference for you is your histogram. If you're not familiar with the histogram, uh, just check out my channel, search my name. I'll break it down for you in that. But the histogram is really going to give us a good reference on are we losing details anywhere. So I can see I'm not losing the shadow or the highlight details. I've got a bit of room to move. That's great. The first thing I will do is open up the light panel and bring up the entire exposure. This way I'm bringing up every tone. There's no harm in doing that, but I'm keeping an eye on those highlights. You can see they're just starting to clip now. So I can't really bring things up too much. If anything, I could recover some of those highlights, but I don't wanna to go too heavy because I'll be pulling those highlights off some of these little dark areas down there. The main part though is the shadows and blacks. And this is where I do a pretty substantial lift, knowing that once it's printed, it's gonna drop back and look how it originally did. This point here 
look, there's a bit of trial and error and honestly, it just comes down to experience. I just generally have a feel now for how much I need to lift them up and what the result's gonna come out like. This is where you'll probably wanna do a few tests before you go printing too large. But as an example, an image like this, I'd be bringing the shadows up. I'm not looking at the slider now, I'm just looking at the actual file, probably about there, and then the blacks, maybe about there. So if we do a before and after on that, that's the original, and that's how much I've lifted it. I'm lifting it to the point where I wouldn't be happy having that as the final original edit for everyone to view online. It's just a little bit too bright, especially down here in this plane that's closest to the viewer that should really have deeper darker tones compared to behind it so i've lifted that to a point now where it's kind of i don't really like that result it's almost embarrassing to send that off to the lab sometimes this is not too bad um, but you get the idea we're lifting up those details so we can really see them so when we print it they're going to drop down but then they'll still look fine so if i push ok on that it's going to apply those changes and you can see on that top layer the before and after. So that's fine, but it'll be way too dark once printed. That's getting a little bit brighter, probably too bright for our liking, but we know that once it's printed on the medium, it's generally gonna be okay. The next thing I do now is probably flatten the image, right click, flatten, so it goes back to a single layer. That will keep the file size small. Now, after all that's been done, the final check for me is going in on a tight zoom, so Command and I just push plus. And what I'm doing is scanning along, looking for any dust spots or just any anything that you may have overlooked in the initial processing. And it could be something like, as I said, a dust spot. Maybe it's, you know, a blemish in the landscape that you just think, oh, it's gonna be a little bit distracting once it's printed larger. You'll be surprised what is seen in print um, versus what's seen on the screen. You'll miss something on the screen and then the second you get that print will be the very first thing that you notice. This image is looking fine. Definitely up in the skies is where you'll want to look for those dust spots. That's where they're going to be most evident. But this one looks all okay. If it's larger than say 30 inches, I'm going to save this as either the PSD or a TIFF file. So it'd be file, save a copy, and then something like this I might just throw on the desktop for example. Um, for now, we'll just leave it on the portable hard drive that it's on, but we could call it, you know, test print. Normally, I'd actually put the dimensions in there. So 30 by 45, put your name in there, you know, why not? And like I said, I'd leave this one as a PSD or you could do a TIFF file. If it's smaller, go JPEG. Definitely fine printing JPEG, especially if it's under 30 inches, absolutely. So save it as the JPEG. Then we're going to push save. The next file, let's just have a look again. So we've got a forest scene here. This one is still the smart object, the original raw file. So all I need to do on this one is double click it to get back to ACR. First and foremost though, would resize it. Image, image size, it's pretty close, but I want to be 30. So 20 by 30, I'm going to push OK. It's going to downsize that slightly. Then we're going to jump into ACR and make those tweaks. So we're going to open it up now, double click. This is why working on smart objects is great because you can come in and you can see all the original editing right here. So like I said, what do we have on the exposure? We could go a little bit brighter up here. Highlights, I'm happy with that, that's fine. Shadows would come up and the blacks just partially about there. Again, you know, it just looks way too bright on the screen, but we know that's fine. Now, I didn't make that layer, that duplicate layer, doesn't really matter, right? What I showed you on that other one is just something to keep in mind. Otherwise, if you've got that smart object, you can just go back and edit straight on top of that. So we've applied those adjustments and then same process, file, save a copy, and then save that wherever you wanna save it. People often ask about sharpening, sharpening for print. I don't do it. What I've shown you here is what I do. I use good glass and I shoot to the best of my ability, making sure that I'm sharp from front to back, all the way through the scene. If you're doing that, then I definitely don't wanna sharpen the file anymore because it, it looks, I don't know, I think it can look over the top when something's been sharpened. I really like a painterly type look in my work. If you start over sharpening, then I feel like it really starts to look like a photograph and if anything, a cheap photograph. I don't think we need to be sharpening up our files. Like you can see this straight 
as it is without sharpening applied, that's more than fine for me. And you'll see, hopefully in the canvas when we get this um, made up, it looks more than fine. And keep in mind that people are viewing this from a certain distance. No one's zooming in and pixel peeping on the literal print or the canvas. And if they are, that's just unrealistic because you don't view artwork like that. You're gonna look at it from a distance while it's up on the wall. From there, you're going to email the printing lab that you're using, or maybe you'll physically go around there and hand them um, the images on a, on a USB or something like that. So I have different labs that I like to use, depending on where the print is getting shipped to, I'll use labs which are gonna help cut down the shipping costs, so different labs in different countries. What I suggest is do a bit of research in your local area and go and get some sample prints done, have a chat with the people that run those businesses, and find the place that's the right fit for you. Specifically getting those test prints done, you might find that different labs are gonna give you different results. So now I would log in to the lab's website that I like to use or email them directly. I email them those files, those PSD files, along with the print and the medium that I wanna print on. We're gonna print these out on canvas, send through the order, and then I'll show you the results once these come through. Special delivery? Mm -hmm. What do we got? Um, Ooh. Two. Mm. And then that's like a little one. Let's have a look, eh? Good boy. So I've ordered quite a few canvases. We're gonna open these up now. Let's have a look at the result. I really like printing on canvas because you can go so large, but it's nice and light. It comes ready to hang and you don't have to worry about reflections. You know, if this was printed on glass, the price would be insane. The weight would be ridiculous. Shipping is a nightmare and there'll be a million reflections. Um, now the canvas quality has really come a long way the past few years and you can even spruce up the canvas a little bit by getting it in a floating frame as well but this is you can see here now the details in this those shadow details it doesn't look overly bright it's just right there's just enough detail in those darks just like what i had in the original file on the edit itself here's our forest scene ended up going 16 by 24 is the final size for this one. And yeah, definitely happy with that. Happy with all the results here that we've got. And uh, certainly printed off quite a few. And you can see here all those details. Give you a close up of that. As I mentioned, the main priority is the, the tones, making sure that the colors and the tonality the darks, the brights are true to what we're seeing on the monitor. That's the big thing and definitely happy with that. They're not too bright, they're not too dark. This big guy here had a lot of shadow details down in that foreground and that's just come through more than fine, just like on the monitor. So obviously an important part of the process when you can get your work in person is to sign it. Uh, what I typically will use, whether it's paper or on the canvas, is uh, a Sharpie. I like to use the silver. Um, every now and then I might use black or gold, but generally I'm using the silver and typically going in the right-hand corner. Um, every now and then, though, depending on the image, I might have to go up in the left-hand side as well. Um, the one tip with signing is to don't overthink it. Just go for it. You're only doing something that you've already done a thousand times in the past, your signature, so don't overthink it. Just go for it and uh, be proud of your work. So here is some work printed on paper, not the canvas. And these are mounted straight onto the mat board, so ready to basically be popped into a frame or they can sit on the shelf or at home just like that. It's just another way that you can display your work. All right guys, hopefully that's made sense and you're able to start trying out some prints for yourself very soon. One key consideration is having a calibrated monitor, a calibrated screen. That was one of the problems I had 
many years ago when I did those first prints when I was horrified was that the PC I was using just had a really average screen. I didn't know anything about calibration. So what I was looking at on the monitor was just vastly different to how it looked on any other device, especially when it came out in print. Um, I've always used Mac since that point. That was kind of my learning curve there. And I found with Mac straight out of the box, the colors are pretty much good to go. And the labs that I use for my printing, they match exactly what I'm getting on the Macs without even needing to calibrate. And I'm not saying Mac is the be all and end all. Obviously, there's many different systems you can use. I've even got the ASUS 4K monitor there, which is set up pretty similar to my Mac as well. So just do your homework and make sure that you are using a reputable screen or a monitor and that it is calibrated. And like I said, some really good ones, even this ASUS 4K one that I've got here, that is calibrated straight out of box as well. So if you have any questions at all, which I'm sure you may, uh, please fire them through and I'll get back to you in the comments. Otherwise, please check out the rest of the channel. I appreciate your support and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Cheers.